The on-field celebration at Penn State last Saturday was the culmination of a nearly flawless football game by the Wolverines, a methodical destruction of the Nittany Lions. The players' joy was matched by the exuberance of their fans, who made the trip to Happy Valley. And the team gleefully acknowledged them after the final seconds ticked away. The victory catapulted the Wolverines to number one in the nation. And now the challenge, the expectations, and the pressure becomes even greater. Now they are not just playing for the Big Ten title and a trip to the Rose Bowl, but for the first time in a long time for the national championship. Hello, everyone. I'm Don Shane. Here we go. Michigan's number one in one poll. It's been a while since they've been number one in any poll. And in the past, when they've reached that lofty status, they have lost and blown it. Dave Llewellyn takes a look back at Michigan being number one in the polls. Michigan has won more games than any other college football team, but the school's last national championships came following undefeated 1947 and 1948 seasons. All-Americans Bump Elliott and Bob Chappius were the stars of those teams. The Wolverines have been number one during the season several times since then, most recently in 1990. Michigan was voted into the top spot four games into the season, but it was a short stay. The controversial non-call in the end zone against the Spartans on a two-point conversion try resulted in a 28-27 defeat for the Wolverines. Despite that disappointment, Michigan did go on to tie for the Big Ten Championship. Bo Schembechler's teams were consistently ranked among the nation's best. In 1976, the Wolverines held the number one ranking for eight weeks before being upset at Purdue. The following season, Rick Leach and the Wolverines took the number one ranking to Minneapolis. The Golden Gophers shocked Michigan by shutting them out 16-0. And here's your first play. Pressure coming. Sack. It is Glenn Steele. The smashing victory over Penn State last week convinced sports writers to vote the Wolverines number one in the Associated Press poll. It's made for an exciting week in Ann Arbor. It feels real good, you know. I mean, it's a really exciting feeling. And, uh, you know, just, you know, it's great. This is the first time since I've been here that we've been ranked number one. I mean... Guys probably don't know how to respond to it. Uh, I think what we're doing is, is basically putting it out of our minds. I mean, all we have to do is play Wisconsin. That's all we can really think about. I think this team knows uh, that we're not where we want to be. There's a lot of things we still can correct, a lot of areas where we can get better. And, uh, you know, I think it's nice to, to be able to be in that situation. But, uh, you know, we're definitely not where we want to be. And, uh, if we lose, it doesn't mean anything. The thing that we have to keep in mind is that uh, it's a championship game, and uh, it's going to be one on the field. You know, they don't vote you the Big Ten championship. You have to go earn it. And in this case, uh, this week, we've got to go to Madison and play a very good football team. The Wolverines' goals are all within reach. The Big Ten title, Rose Bowl berth, and just maybe the national title. For the Big Ten ticket, I'm Dave Llewellyn back to the Big Ten ticket. You know, you can go crazy trying to figure out the Rose Bowl scenario, scenarios and the possibilities, but I'll try to simplify it for you, at least with reference to Michigan. If they beat Wisconsin and Ohio State, they win the Big Ten title, they go to the Rose Bowl. If Michigan beats Wisconsin and then loses to Ohio State and finishes with one conference loss, they can still go to the Rose Bowl as long as Penn State wins its remaining games. That would mean Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State would all have one loss, and Michigan wins the tiebreaker between the three. Now, this year, though, there's an additional clause in the Rose Bowl contract which states the Rose Bowl can bypass that tiebreaker system and take the higher-ranked team, which would likely be Ohio State, since they defeated the Wolverines, and therefore the Buckeyes could go to Pasadena. Michigan wins out. You don't worry about any of that stuff. Now, there is one coach in the Lions who is very interested in what the Michigan team is doing, and that's the former head coach of the Wolverines, Gary Moeller. Moeller, of course, left Michigan under difficult circumstances and now coaches the Lions linebackers. And I asked Gary about this Michigan team rising to number one 
in the AP rankings. Staff is done with this team because, you know, a lot of teams have good football players, and the key to that thing to be on the top is to put it all together. And I think the players, along with their coaches, Coach Carr and those guys, have done a great job in that way. But, yeah, I, I feel a part of it, and I'm happy for them. Should they beat Wisconsin, beat Ohio State, go to the Rose Bowl, stay number one, win a national championship? A lot of ifs there. But if they do, will you feel part of this national championship team if that happens for you? Yeah, th as I said, a little bit. You sure, I think everybody who's been involved with it a little will. But, you know, you recruit some of those kids and you get to know them. And, and so you always feel a part of it. And I think it's something that they can do. You go through the three ifs, but it's something they can do if they keep the focus that they've had so far. You recruited a number of players who are still on that team. Tell me about Charles Woodson. Well, Woodson, it was a funny recruit, Don, in a way, uh, because you always wanted to come to Michigan. You knew this guy was a great player, and you can't believe, you know, this guy just wants to come. So I was really excited about that. But I always went through the scenario. Anytime a kid tells you when to play, you're always trying to figure out, well, what could go wrong? So I thought, ah, somebody else is trying to promise him he'll be a running back. Because he gained 2,300 yards in high school. So I said, hey, I'm going to make you a running back. He said, no, coach, I want to be, I said, I want to make, he said, no, I want to be a defensive back. And he was telling the truth, and he turned out to be a pretty good one. Some people say he's going to be a high draft pick, obviously, that he's a terrific player. Could this kid come in and play for the Detroit Lions right now? Uh, he, he's, he's of that caliber, yes. And, uh, you know, I say that more reluctantly for his point because I want him to stay focused on what he's doing. But he's got talents that's going to exceed the number of people who are playing here now at the proper time. Mm -hmm. I know you're very close with Lloyd. Do you talk and have you talked about, you know, what's going on right now with the team? Well, I haven't talked to him uh, in the last couple of weeks, but I've talked to him on a couple of occasions, and I know he's busy doing what he's doing and, and has to be focused in that direction. And really the best thing I can do, Don, to be honest with you, is stay away from those things. You know, I don't want to be uh, interfering in any way, but it's fun to watch him. If you were a betting man, would you say that it's going to happen? that they're good enough and, and should maybe win out and well, win this thing. I'm not going to bet, but I'd say that chances are well over 80% that this thing could happen, that they can control their own destiny. They can't worry about what other people are doing or who they're playing. they got to focus and control. And yet, as we all know, it's very, very difficult, no matter what time of year, what century it is, to go undefeated in a football season. Gary Moeller, a good guy. You know, Lions players really like Gary a whole lot. He'll likely be a head coach again someday. When we come back, our weekly Tough Guy Award and a look at what is coming up next week. Stay right there. Now, just a reminder, today is important. Michigan has to win, and they should. And then next week, huge. It's Ohio State week. The Buckeyes come to Ann Arbor, ranked in the top five. Michigan has ruined their season the last few years. I'll have the pregame show with Bo live from Michigan Stadium at 11.30. The kickoff, the Wolverines and the Buckeyes, is at noon. All of it right here on Channel 7. That's it for this week's show. Coming up next, it's Illinois and Ohio State. That's a blowout. And then Michigan at Wisconsin. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next week. Enjoy both football games, everyone.